you're doing an open house and people are walking in. So what do you say to them? You're hoping that everybody that walks in just wants to buy the house you have open, but reality is they won't. And so how do you turn a potential buyer into a lead, into one of your leads? So that's today's topic is what do you say? Stay tuned. Here we go. So before we jump into all of this, we need to talk about how your market is right now and maybe how coronavirus has influenced it. I would imagine if your market is like our market here in the Midwest, you probably don't have enough listings. That means there are too many buyers, you're in a very strong seller's market, not enough listings, and so you're gonna get a lot of showings quickly, you might get multiple offers, and it's gonna go under contract in a day or two or three or four days, but probably under contract in less than a week. That means you need to time the listing going into MLS so that you get a chance to do the open houses. Otherwise, if you load this in MLS on Monday, you're probably gonna be under contract on Thursday or Friday. That means your open houses don't get to happen. So think about loading it in MLS on a Friday, maybe Thursday night, so you get the chance to do your open houses on Saturday and Sunday. And then you'll be presenting offers to your seller Sunday night, assuming you have offers. But that way, you can make a plan to do open houses and not get them shut down on you because your house sells too fast. Now, the other thing I want you to do, if you're a newer agent, and you don't have a lot of experience and maybe not a lot of confidence in doing a really good successful open house yet, I want you to go to some other open houses. So this coming Saturday um, and Sunday, drive around and go to some other open houses and listen in to what these other agents are saying. Look at what they have set up, how did they do it? Um, and have a conversation and you're gonna learn a lot about things that you should say and things you shouldn't say. And you're gonna catch on really quick why a lot of agents succeed in this business <laughs> and why so many fail in the first two years. So, and now, if you're an agent who's been around a long time like me, I've been doing this 23 years, I've done hundreds of open houses, hundreds and hundreds of open houses, and I've had huge success with open houses. I still do open houses. Uh, I've got a team of agents now, they do open houses. We've had so much success in just the last year of open houses. That's why I want to share this with you because I love open houses. Why do we do open houses? Because they work. They work really well. It's a great way to uh, capture buyers and it's also a very inexpensive way to do some advertising. So. If you are an agent who's been around for a long time like me, you probably also need to go look at your competition and check out some of those open houses this coming weekend because agents have come and gone in the last 23 years and you need to see who's doing these other open houses around yours and what are they saying so that maybe you can tweak how you're doing your open houses. We're gonna go through a lot of things. I've already got two other videos and so you need to watch these other two videos. They're how to do an amazing open house, or they're titled how to do the best open house. There's two parts to that video. But this video is about what do you say? What do you say when people walk in your open houses? So before we're gonna let anyone in your open house, make sure you've done these things first to maximize the success of it. Number one, you've got to get there early. You've gotta get there early because you need to get your directional set up. So what I do, the entrance of the neighborhood, I put two directionals. That way it gives the impression there might be more than one open house in there. People are gonna be more inclined to come in if there's more than one house to look at. And your front entrance, people are driving by faster. You need to alert them enough that they start slowing down and two signs will usually do that. Now you need a directional 
at every single turn. So if you're way back in the neighborhood and you've got eight turns, you're gonna need eight signs plus a second one for the front. I do two or three in the um, yard itself. I want people to be very relaxed and approachable when they wanna walk in. I want them to walk in. I don't want them to just drive by and then they keep going. And you'll see that when you're inside of an open house, people just drive by. It's like, ah, just stop and come in. So make sure you have enough directionals and get there early to give you time to get those signs in place and get you in the house in time that you can get all the lights turned on. And what would be ideal is do a Facebook video. So walk through the house as soon as all the lights are turned on, do a quick Facebook video about your open house, get it on Facebook immediately. It advertises you, gives you some publicity, and it shows off that you're working and doing an open house. And then just by chance, maybe some of those people gives them time to come to your open house. Here's something that you can also put in the yard. I, I've got a couple of these. So you can order these online. Uh, it's just a big open house banner. It, uh, it goes on a stake in the yard and then it flaps around in the wind. This is great to, attack, to uh, attract a lot of attention and they're relatively pretty cheap because you're gonna use this a lot if you're doing a lot of open houses. Uh, you can get those online. You can get them at your local real estate board office. That's where I got that one. Um, so now let's, let's jump into more of this. So I wrote a real estate book a few years ago. It's called How to Sell Homes in a Tough Market. It's on uh, Barnes & Noble. Uh, it's on Amazon. You can order it from any bookstore if they don't have it in stock. And in this, I've got my 25 successful tips with a lot of humorous stories just to make it more entertaining. I've got everything that we're gonna talk about today, for the most part, is in this book. So, let's jump in here more. So, some things that you need to be set up with in your open house. You need an MLS sheet about the house. And because there's gonna be information on that, like taxes and room sizes and everything that the listing agent, which could be you, has typed in, you need it with you. You also need one copy of the disclosure. Now you're not doing this to pass out. Don't, don't print a stack of these because you, that's a great way. If people are interested in that house, then that's the great way to get their email address so you can email this to create a conversation on email about the house. It's a great way to either sell the house you're in or turn the uh, potential buyer into a lead. But you need the disclosure with you because they're gonna have questions about the ages of the roof, the furnace, the air, the hot water heater. Um, did the sellers mention that they have water coming in the basement? All that's on the disclosure. Now, your mission with this open house, your primary mission is to sell the house you're in. That's your goal. Out of respect for the homeowner, that's why you're there, is to sell the house you're in. Now the reality is, most people walking in are not going to want to buy that one particular house. So the purpose of this video is trying to capture them as a client of yours. So now let's talk about what you're wearing. What are you wearing? <laughs> Here's what I do. Do not wear shorts. If it's 100 degrees out, do not wear shorts. You need to wear business casual. Uh, you can think about if you want to wear jeans, but I wear dress pants and a uh, button-up shirt. Maybe it's just a short sleeve polo shirt in the summer, but do not wear a t-shirt. Do not wear shorts. You need to look professional. This is your job and you're at work. This, this is what you are doing today to work. And so you're also being compared to the other open houses where these people are going. So look professional. Do not wear a tie. If you're coming from church, I would not wear a sports coat. Just wear business casual. Don't overdress and don't underdress. Um, and for the ladies, just look really good. Ladies can get by with, with so much more than the guys. We is pretty much what we have on. It's what I'm wearing today. 
So, um, but don't go so casual that people don't take you seriously. Don't, don't look like you just came in from working out or you just walked in from swimming and that's, that's just not gonna work. Now the other thing you need to have printed, this is for you, print out everything else that's for sale in the neighborhood because that's what some people are gonna ask. Well, what do the other houses around here sell for? I mean, we just passed another house for sale down the street. What's it listed at? You need to have the answer to that. If you don't have the answer to that, you didn't do a good job setting up for your open house. So print out everything in the neighborhood that's for sale, just have them with you. Um, the last thing is also very important in the, in the environment that we're selling in today with coronavirus, and coronavirus is not going away anytime soon. You need sanitizer with you and you need some masks. Now, depending on the county of where you're selling at, masks could be required in public. And if so, um, you should be wearing one. Um, maybe this will be relaxed soon and we don't have to wear masks, but you need to have them available. Now, when you leave the house, what I would suggest doing, take a Clorox wipe and film yourself wiping off the uh, faucets and the uh, light switches and the door handles. There are certain door handles that will be touched. The entrance, the handle doorknob going to the garage. There could be um, bathroom doorknobs if people need to move the door in order to walk around those rooms. Film yourself sanitizing those and then send it to your client when you leave. So that it'll make them feel so good knowing that you did that. Um, it also makes you look good and very responsible. You don't want to ever be seen as negligent, not having these things available. So let's move on to the exciting part of this video. Okay, this is where it gets fun. So this is still before anyone walks in your open house. You need two flyers, two. The first flyer is about the house. You need something with your name, your phone number, your contact information about the house you're having open. Remember, that's why you're there is to sell that one house. So that's why you've read the MLS sheet. You're familiar with the house. You've read the disclosure. And so when people do walk in, you've got answers. And if you can't remember the answer, you can just look it up. Now, these two flyers, here's the purpose. Flyer number one's about the house. That's gonna change from week to week as you're in different houses. And the other flyer's about you. This is a marketing piece. You can have anything, but keep in mind, the other person, the other purpose that you're there is to try to capture a buyer. If they're not gonna buy that house, then you want some information about yourself. This is what's gonna set you apart from other agents doing open houses. You need something that they're gonna keep about you. So here is a flyer. These are past mailings. So if you just did a mailing, then you've already got a flyer. And we're gonna talk about how to do mailings and how to do your advertising and marketing on, on some future videos. By the way, speaking of that, please click subscribe and you'll need to turn on your notifications down there also so you're notified when I make these other videos. Um, so I've been doing this for 23 years and speaking of that, I, uh, <laughs> you'll see in the beginning, uh, I was listed in Forbes magazine last year and this year representing um, Kansas City and real estate as one of the top market leaders in the country. So this was a flyer that went out on one of my mailings this year. Sometimes I'll just have a stack of these as my extra flyer. Something else that I've done, you can, depending on the city that you're in, you might have uh, a sports team. You can make a schedule about um, your football team or your baseball team. If you're in a smaller city and you don't have a professional team like, like uh, we have here, then um, do a schedule of the high school games. You could do football, all the different sports that they have and do multiple mailings. Um, that can also be a great mailing for any local market. Wherever you're in your local suburb, uh, you could combine your different high schools and do um, a football, basketball, all those different kinds of ideas. Now it's not about the schedule. Remember, it's not about the schedule. 
It's about the part up here about me. <laughs> I want him to keep my name and my phone number handy. And this has a uh, magnet on the back, so hopefully they hang it up on the refrigerator. Next time they're getting milk, and yeah, there I am, in case they think about selling their house. Something else I've done in the past, these are tri-fold flyers. They look more professional. I enjoy showing off the agents on my team. So this is who was on my team. Here's a uh, family picture. Here's information about me. And then it's of course on everything you ever make, you want to ask for uh, referrals. And so that's this. Now something I've noticed in the last year, Vistaprint is now giving you the ability to make these on their site. It's uh, cheaper than how I used to have to make this. This was through a different company, but now Vistaprint offers more control and I can do this more individually. One thing I wanna tell you before we move on, I'll talk about this on future videos. This is a picture that was allowed for free on Vistaprint's site. The, the front was pre-made and then I you get to play with it and alter it. This is a stock photo that's allowed. This is my personal house. My wife took the picture of me with my sign in front of my house. I own this picture. If you're going on um, the computer and you think you're downloading a free picture to use on your marketing and it says it's free and there's no copyright, make sure it truly is free because you don't wanna get dinged with some copyright infringement on some picture you're marketing with. Now, let's move on. Those are the two flyers. Now you're gonna pass those out in the hopes that they take your other flyer. So now we're finally ready to let people in your open house. So at this point, you've done everything on this video so far, and uh, you've looked at my other two videos on how to do it the best open house, and because it has 20 successful points on it too. Now we're to the point, I want you to get this book or a book just like this. This is called How to Have Confidence and Power in Dealing with People. This book's by Les Giblin, it's been around a long time, many decades. I read this back in college a long time ago. I've been doing this 23 years, so I was five years old when I got started. <laughs> anyway, I, I believe in this book so much, I've bought multiple copies for everyone on my real estate team because this book is gonna teach you people skills. There are lots of people skills books out there doesn't matter which one you get. Just get a book that will help you with some uh, fine tuning your people skills because this is where you're gonna need the best people skills possible. Now, before in the video, I wanted you to go to some other open houses to see what those agents do. When you walked into those, you're walking in like a buyer would. When you walk into an open house, what would you want? What does a buyer want? from the agent that's in there. So they want information about that house first, but they want an agent who knows the area. So you may not know the area well, so you need to give the impression that you do know the area. That's why you've already printed out what everything else is for sale in that neighborhood. They want an agent who's gonna be available to them. So as you start having conversations, realize they might wanna go look at houses later that night or the next day. And they want someone to help them who is genuinely interested in them, their situation, what they're looking for and where they're at in life. They want somebody who's genuinely listening and trying to find the solution as to the house they're looking to buy. So keep this in mind, what their perspective will be as they're talking and listening to you. So now it's showtime. People are walking in your open house. What do you say? This is the topic of the video. So this is what's gonna set you apart from your competition. What do you say? What do you not say? How do you say it? How do you handle the conversation? This is where it becomes fun. Now, before we get into all this, I've been doing this a long time, 23 years. My first two years, were really, really bad. 
I sold one house in my first two years. My third year started really taking off. During that very beginning, I did have an open house where I did everything and I did it right. And it became a huge open house, many open houses in a row. Many of those did become successful. The last open house I had there, I think was number seven, and I did sell the house. Now, they had their own agent, but the house, it was my listing, the house still sold only because of the open house. But along the way, I did pick up buyers, I picked up neighbors, and over the next few years, all of those different clients that I picked up uh, amounted to over $100,000 in my personal income. So do open houses work? Yes, they do work, but you have to do them correctly or they're not gonna work at all. The very first thing you need to do when before people walk in, you need to be uh, with a pen and some paper. Don't do a huge binder like a psychiatrist taking notes, you know, how do you feel about this house? Just jot down their names. When they first walk in the house, they're gonna say their names and you've got to write them down. They're not going to tell you their names again and then later in the conversation, as you do try to hopefully collect their personal info, like their phone number and, and um, email address, they may not say their names again. They shouldn't need to, they already told you their names. Write down their names. You'd be amazed how nobody will do that. And you might not even remember my name already. <laughs> but make the habit of you, even the back of a flyer, just jot down their names so you know who they are because somebody else is about to walk in and you've gotta, you gotta be writing down their names. What you could do, if you start getting four or five groups at a time, write down green shirts so you can start telling these, these families apart. Have small talk. This is an art. This is where your communication skills come in. You wanna have small talk. What led them to your open house? You're gonna think of some things to say because now they're just standing there. Um, you're gonna offer them sanitizer. You're gonna say they're welcome to go throughout the house. This is the price. It has this many bedrooms, this many bathrooms. What led you to my open house today? Because you're gonna find it interesting. Were they just driving around for fun? Uh, did they see it on Zillow or on realtor.com? Uh, maybe they um, are a neighbor. Maybe they're just out walking. And it's a good way to just build a little bit of a conversation. Now, at that point, they're gonna start looking around the house. Don't be annoying and don't follow them everywhere. If they go upstairs, sometimes I'll go halfway up the stairs and I stop. I let them go throughout the house. I don't follow them. If they have questions, I just say, just yell at me with questions while you're up there. When they go to the basement, I never follow them. Don't ever follow them. First, it's annoying to them. They don't want you there anyway. They just want to see the house. And secondly, you don't know who these people are. You don't want to allow yourself to be uh, trapped or in a situation where they're not up to any good and you are now stuck and secluded and isolated in the basement with strangers. So don't don't ever follow anyone in the basement. Now, they are going to begin a conversation with you when they come back into wherever it is you're standing. Now, I stand at the front. If I can, I'm near the front door where I can see out. I wanna see who's walking up. I wanna have a little bit of a, an advance notice who is walking in so that I also know people are about to walk in. And then, you need to listen to them. The conversation is gonna unfold. Maybe they just say, thanks, we're just looking, um, and then they leave. And that's totally fine, you're gonna get that. But you're also gonna get people who are genuinely looking to buy a house, whether it's this house, whether it's another house in the neighborhood. And so, ask them what they think about the house. They're gonna say, I love it, but I wish it had a walkout basement. Then, you can say, well, there's two other houses in the neighborhood for sale right now that do have walkout basements, and you've got your sheet, and here's what they're priced at. And they're gonna say, can I get that list? You're gonna say, oh no. <laughs> I 
I only printed this one for me just so I would know. But if you want to give me your email address, I'll be glad to email you all of them. In fact, I can even set you up on an automated search um, so you don't miss any of them. So as new listings come on the market, you're just notified. That's what you need. Now, the question is, do you have them sign in or do you just have conversations? I used to have everyone sign in, but people are a lot more guarded these days. They don't want to give out their personal information. If you make them sign in, they may make up names. They could make up a phone number. They could make up email addresses. Now, as your conversation unfolds, maybe you could have collected them as a buyer. They're really, really interested and now they like you, but they've already given you bogus information. <laughs> they can't backpedal that. So I wait and I start collecting their info as I have the conversation. Now, when you start discussing their price range and are they pre-approved, at this point, you need to ask them, are you working with another agent? You don't have to ask that in the beginning. It's too soon to ask that when they first walk in the door. They're gonna say, oh gosh, too much pressure. So, but at this point, before you get too involved with these conversations, ask them, because now you're ready to sign them up on a search. Are they working with another agent? And if they're not, then ask, you know, I'd be glad to set you up on a search. I'd be glad to show you some of these other homes if you're interested. Um, and so listen to them. They're going to tell you what they're looking for. So now you need to start taking some notes. Uh, they could say, well, we're downsizing. And, um, or they're, they're, uh, one of their parents is gonna be moving in with them. So they need a ranch. They need another bedroom in the basement with a walkout basement, maybe a kitchen down there. Maybe uh, they, they are coming in with a three-year-old and a baby, and you can tell she's pregnant, and they need a much larger home. That's obvious. They are upgrading. So listen to everything that they're saying. Have small talk, but don't be annoying and, and give them the high-pressure sales pitch. What you want to do is collect their information. You want their phone numbers, you want their email address. If you can get their home address, then you can send them, put them in your mailing list and you can send them your uh, junk mail. <laughs> you can send them your magnets and flyers about yourself as you do your next um, advertisement. That's a great way to collect um, addresses to beef up your name list. Something I've noticed when I've gone to other people's open houses, because I still do that, if I'm on my way home and there's a couple open houses in my neighborhood, I typically do stop by because I just want to see, I just want to see the house really quick. So something I've noticed other agents will do is when I walk in, they're sitting there on a laptop or they're sitting there on their phone. While I'm looking around the house really quick, they're sitting there playing computer games. They're not talking with me enough. They're not creating small talk. Now, I don't really want small talk because I'm there just to see the house. <laughs> I don't want to be bugged by that agent, but they should be having small talk with me. They don't know at first that I'm another agent. I'm not going to tell them that. We're not even having a conversation. I'm just walking in. They're like, hey, just look around. I'm like, <laughs> okay. So when they walk in, if you are on your laptop or on your phone, put it down, close it, be fully engaged with them so that you can listen to them. If you're sitting there glancing down at the laptop and you're talking to them, you are not listening and you are not fully engaged and they're picking up on that. Now, while you're having small talk, which goes quickly, this is a fast conversation, Think of things. You need to think of things that you have in contact in common with them. Maybe you have kids about the same age and they're asking about the school. Well, your kids are in that school. Maybe they're asking about Christian schools in the area and you can think of, well, two of my neighbors, they've got kids that go to that school. Um, whatever it is, maybe um, you're in your personal info. I've got an about me section and in this, I talk about uh, where I went to college, 
where I graduated from Missouri State University. I talk about being in the band there. I try to think of things that people can relate to me about. I talk about my family. I talk about where I went to high school. If these people happen to um, maybe come to find out they went to the high school you did, but they're five years younger. Well, pff, now you've just bonded with them. Think of things that you have in common with them. You're gonna have something in common with everyone who walks in. Uh, maybe they, um, maybe they're, they are downsizing and you can say, well, you know, my parents just downsized. I just sold their house last year because they just needed to downsize and they went to a, a retirement community and the people are coming through, they're just curious to see what's going on in the neighborhood. You could be having neighbors come through. What you don't know is they are thinking of also moving in about six months. If you are very well prepared with all of this, they're gonna keep your info. They may call you. I can't tell you how many listings I've picked up from my open houses, from the surrounding neighbors, because in my other two videos, I show what I do to canvas those neighborhoods before my open houses. Um, now, after the small talk, after you've talked with them, after you've developed a little bit of some things in common, now you wanna ask for their personal info. Don't ask for them to sign a book when they first walk in. They're not gonna to wanna to do that, but now they will. They want you to set them up on a search. They want you to email them the disclosure, or they want you to email them other houses in the neighborhood for sale. Now they're gonna give you their real info. <laughs> they're gonna give you their real email addresses and their cell phone numbers so you can text also. Remember, you've already got their names. Use their names while you're talking with them. As they leave, you've got a bottle of sanitizer, offer them to use your sanitizer again. They will, they're gonna appreciate that because they've been touching things in these people's house. So now, by the way, if you're having a vacant house open, make sure you bring some toilet paper with you because the house you're in may not have any and um, that's another reason you're gonna want sanitizer with you. Something else you could be doing during your open house, as you're listening to them, ask them what their, your, their price range was. If this house is too much money, and many times it is, if you're in an upper bracket listing, they'll be embarrassed at first, but they'll say, I can't afford this house. But you can ask that and say, what price range are you looking for? And then they'll say, well, significantly lower. <laughs> And that's when you can say, are you pre-approved? Have you talked with a lender? And if not, refer them to a lender that, that you're using because you need to get them pre-approved. They need to know what they can really afford. Uh, it's possible if you do have a lender that you use quite a bit, they might have made a flyer for you for this open house showing what different payments can be. That also makes you look good. And then the lender is hoping to pick up some business also. One thing I want you to understand when you're doing open houses, the key is consistency. You're not going to pick up a buyer every open house. Now you have to go through this on every one. You've got to do everything on this video and the other two open house videos consistently. Do the best job you can setting up. Do the best you can in the house. Be, be on your A game. Make sure you've had enough sleep the night before. Make sure you're prepared. Don't walk into an open house and not know anything about the house that you're at. It'll come off making you look very unorganized and that you just have no clue what you're talking about. Don't get frustrated. There are two keys to doing an open house. Number one is consistency. You've got to do them all the time, all the time. The biggest problem you'll ever have with an open house is collecting too many new buyers off of it. Then you don't have time to do more opens because you're out showing houses every weekend. The other thing, don't get frustrated. If you do five open houses in a row and some of those nobody comes, some of those you, there's just nothing good coming out of it. You're not, you're not selling the house. You're not picking up any buyers. Nobody seems interested. Keep doing them. Consistency is the key. 
you might have to do 10 open houses in a row and then boom, you pick up a buyer. And then open house after that, you pick up another buyer. Two houses after that, you pick up two buyers on the same open house. And then it's like, wow. But you've got to remember open houses work. They, they do work, but it's a numbers game, just like everything in real estate. It's a numbers game. If it was so easy that you just do one open house or two in a row and boom, you get two or three brand new clients, it just, it just doesn't work like that. So don't let yourself get frustrated and consistently do them over and over and over and over. And I guarantee you're going to have amazing successful open houses. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I love open houses. I still do open houses all the time. Everyone on my team does open houses. We do them because they work. They just work. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already done it. And I'm going to make some more videos because this was really fun to do. And please turn on your notifications. Thanks.